Recording in progress. Okay, now let's get started. We'll start with the fundamentals of uh, statistics. Before we begin, uh, let us understand what I cover in these four topics. Basically, I am planning to cover uh, you know, two sections today and remaining two sections uh, tomorrow. Let us see how it goes, right? Uh, again, it depends on how you, uh, you know, grasp these topics. If you grasp it fast, we'll speed it up, okay? Anyway, initially, I will not speed up because I have a mix of uh, people, uh, both technical, non-technical, and uh, non-statistics background people are also there. Hence, initially, this, the pace will be a bit slow, okay? Okay, in section one, we'll get started with uh, introduction to statistics and will help you to understand the branches of statistics and the scales of measurements and so on. In section two, we'll discuss about the descriptive statistics, the branches of descriptive statistics such as measures of central tendency and measures of spread. As part of um, measures of central tendency, we'll walk you through the business applications of uh, mean, median and mode, what is outlier and so on. In section 3, we will visualize the data and understand the different uh, types of distributions such as the normal distribution, uniform distribution, bimodal distribution, what is skewness, what is kurtosis and how do we interpret the outliers presence. And also we'll take a look at the position of the data using percentiles and quartiles and so on. And lastly, in the section 4, we'll help you understand the measures of variability. It is also known as measures of spread. So as part of this, let's take a deep dive in understanding the measures such as range, uh, variance, standard deviation, coefficient of variation and how to apply those measures in business scenarios okay now first thing first what is uh, statistics what is statistics can someone tell me what is statistics what is your understanding about statistics let's make this session more interactive can someone tell me or open up what is uh, statistics Statistics is a branch of math, mathematics. It deals with collecting, interpreting, organizing and interpretation of the data. So initially, let's say you, go, you got into a project, right? So the moment you get the data, instead of applying the fancy algorithms and making some predictions, we first try to read and understand the data by applying statistical techniques. So by doing this, we are able to understand what type of uh, distribution the data has. Do we have outlier in the data? In case of any outliers presence, how do we deal with them? Does it really require any treatment? In case of any missing values, do we have to treat them? Your data should be clean. You have the data. Data is the backbone. Without data, we cannot do anything. We have the data, but is that data, whatever we have it in our end, is sufficient or not? The sample given by the customer is helpful for us to go ahead and perform the analysis. Okay, that sample is there, and we need to go and we need to go and right so analyze. The given data is sufficient enough. Or does it require any cleaning? Is that data, whatever we received is complete and consistent? Okay, so in, in simple term, as part of statistics, right? Um, statistics is a science. It deals with collection of the data and classifying the data, analyzing the data and interpreting the numerical facts or data and the use of probability theory to impose order on aggregates of data. As part of data analytics, the simple data analytics, the same process we follow. We collect the data, 
in the real time scenario we don't get the data in a single source system multiple source system will be there we need to talk to the customers stakeholders key stakeholders and find out the source of truth which one is, which source should i use it which source system should i use it for oracle applications you are using three different uh, rdbms databases which database should i use it okay and right so and then once you know the source of truth you need to collect the data and you need to classify them I, right, and you need to do some kind of uh, data cleaning and analyze the data once you analyze the data and uh, plotting the data using charts or visuals the next step is the moment when you look at the chart it tells you the story as a statistician you'll be knowing right even a data analyst they can make out so data what is the difference between data analyst and data scientist data analyst they know etl part reporting part how to extract the data clean the data load the data into the target system but they don't know statistics they have a very limited knowledge on the statistics they don't have much knowledge on statistics whereas as a data scientist you should do the data analysis and also you need to apply the statistical techniques to gain more insights about your data okay and other thing is the probability theory using probability theory you can make a prediction what is the probability that my uh, you know the specific instrument in my stock portfolio uh, you know which uh, specific instruments can more likely to uh, you know go uh, you know what is the probability that i can sell it with higher probability so or higher cost okay so what is the probability that i can get 80 percentage return or 60 percentage return or 20 percentage return you can make a prediction with the probability theory typical data analysis he, he knows only uh, how to clean the data how to uh, create charts with that chart you should be able to ask the price increase a simple example is as the price increases the sell is uh, going down this much you can say with probability you can make a prediction right what is the probability what is the likelihood my sales uh, you know can go high if i increase the price so it is not see increasing the price is a blanket statement how much should i increase okay in simple term using so apart from performing the typical data analysis you can go one step further by knowing the statistics you can make a prediction apart from this we have the prediction models like um, linear regression statistical models we call it as a machine learning models like um, linear regression logistic regression and various other supervised and um, unsupervised machine learning algorithm and the semi supervised machine learning algorithm we can make a prediction about the future instead of knowing the present only right so we can go one step further and predict what is going to happen in the future with the help of statistics there are two branches of uh, statistics are there at a high level one is the descriptive statistics the other one is the inferential statistics let us start with understanding what is descriptive statistics before that let us understand the different uh, scales of measurement or the different level of measurement okay so the so now the question is why should i know the levels of measurement so knowing the level of measurement helps us to decide how to interpret the data from a variable so what is a variable a variable is anything that can take on different values across your data set for example salary is a variable for example here something called salary salary is a variable right age is another variable so this variable it can take on different values right let's say in my data set i have uh, 1 million 
records are there the salary can take on you know different values across your 1 million data set right that is what a variable but if you know the levels of measurement it helps us to decide how to interpret a data from this variable from these variables and also knowing the level of measurement helps us to decide what statistical analysis appropriate on these values that are assigned okay whether this variable is a categorical variable nominal variable or ordinal variable or is that an interval or ratio based on which you decide which technique that you can use it okay so there are uh, four different uh, scales of measurements are there so one is so we can say variable okay four different types of variables nominal variable nominal type of variable ordinal type of variable we have something called interval and ratio so what is a nominal type of data so nominal right so in the case of nominal the data can only be categorized we can categorize it is also called as a categorical categorical data categorical categorical okay it is also called as a categorical even the ordinal is also kind of a categorical using nominal we can the data can only the data can be categorized whereas in the case of ordinal type of variable you can categorize the data as well as you can rank the values as well as you can rank the values for example would you give me some example for nominal type of variable Categ i i mentioned very clearly categorical for example you have something called gender in your data set you have a column by the name of gender gender can have male female that's all okay so again you have something called female Uh, female male so some customers right you know data said let's an order number order number 100 this order was raised by a male and 100 to this order was raised by a female so using this categorical variable gender we can classify the given data how many number of orders raised by male how many number of orders raised by female we can do classification with the help of the gender or with the help of this categorical variable the gender is a categorical variable it is a nominal type of variable so why it is called as a nominal type of variable why do we call uh, it's a you know nominal type of variable because so in this case right it just we are labeling the data you just think that way nominal is kind of labeling the data labeling the data labeling the data so for this order we label them as a male right we are labeling this data in the case of nominal type of data we use frequencies how many number of males ordered so on so product or how many number of males ordered in total how many number of females you know how many number of orders raised by female if somebody is asked right this is something like a frequencies how many number of times the female is occurring how many number of male is occurring frequencies the nominal type of data we can use uh, right so we use frequencies proportions or percentages what is the percentage of uh, Uh, orders raised by male versus female if somebody ask right but in this case you cannot calculate mean can i ca compute the what is a mean mean is average in statistics we call average as mean okay so i'll be using this term mean only try to be used to this term okay so because if you are a statistician or data scientist you should be knowing what is mean non statisticians if you tell them how they will be able to understand so average is a very uh, simple formula we studied during our uh, school time okay so using the nominal type of variable we can classify or categorize the data the one example is gender other example is something like religion religion and we have something else called color let's say you are selling 
different brands of cars in your showroom and also for each brand different colors you sell it right so color is a categorical variable it is also nominal variable you cannot take you cannot compute the average on this nominal type of variables like a gender gender uh, color religion and you have something called defect type another example is something like defect type if you are a software guy you know defect type is you know, severity uh, you know uh, medium low something like that okay something like that okay so these are all some kind of categories categorical variable you cannot do summaries male plus female plus female female plus you cannot do that right it doesn't make any sense all right is there any way if i can so okay you might argue with me instead of having text values in our company we do some kind of encoding what is encoding instead of male we use numeric value one instead of female we specify zero wherever the order raised by female we flag that uh, you know records in the gender column as zero for male we flag them as one so since it is a numeric variable if i compute the average which is nothing but the mean does it make sense it doesn't make any sense still okay it is just one is just a male it is uh, zero is a female that's all this is to recognize whether this order is raised by a female or male that's all right so here if even if you encode this data with some numeric values if you even if you do average on this values it does not make any sense can you say uh, how many number of um, can you tell me the the average number number of orders raised by male right so if you say the male uh, is something like one, you know 2.5 that does not make any sense 2.15 that does not make any sense right so in simple term you cannot take average or you cannot uh, you know find out the standard deviation you cannot perform arithmetic operation on this nominal type of variable okay there are a lot of uh, you know examples we can uh, specify okay in the case of stock market right so you have something called um, you know small ca cap stocks and corporate bonds so let's say you have uh, you know numbers like you know the derivatives you have a column called derivatives you have something called 1 2 3 so one is small cap uh, stocks and two is corporate bonds three is derivatives just to distinguish you know uh, which uh, funds are related to which type of investment that's all right the next one is the ordinal okay even the nominal type of variable we use different uh, you know terminologies okay so the we call it as a qualitative variable it is called as a quantitative ca categorical variable some people they call it as a qualitative variable qualitative variable and some they call it as a non parametric value non parametric variable non parametric so nominal is also called as categorical qualitative non parametric you cannot uh, compute arithmetic operations like a mean and standard deviation you cannot you know use it on this column only frequencies are possible and proportions you can find out frequencies you can find out you cannot use mean median sorry mean standard deviation you cannot use it more the median uh, mode we have something called mode mode is something like a frequencies okay only that one you can use it the same thing is applicable here also the ordinal is also categorical variable and it is also called as a qualitative variable something like feedback let's say you you run a restaurant once the uh, customer finish their meal you are asking them to fill in the feedback form so they give the rating so between 1 to 5 5 being the high right if they give 4 or 5 that means outstanding if it is 3 
they are not so satisfied they are okay one is poor two is poor okay so this also feedback is also categorical variable in the case of ordinal type of variable the values that are there in your variable right it stresses the order or rank of the values that is the difference between nominal and ordinal type so even the ordinal is also called a categorical variable it is also called a non parametric variable right so we can say qualitative variable all these three terms are still applicable but the difference is rank you can categorize the data and also you can rank the values in your variable that's what i mentioned the example is feedback let's say the, the for simplicity sake i take you know one customer one, you know one customer gave me a rating as 5 the other customer gave me the rating as the quality of my food is 4 other customers gave 4 4 4 and uh, let's you know some customer they gave me 3 in this case the feedback column is a categorical variable we can call it as a non parametric don't worry about this term parametric we'll explain it later here this column has values uh, in terms of numeric value or you can specify something like you know outstanding you know like uh, te- here i mentioned right they can specify the text also right text value outstanding very good three is good something like that but unlike nominal type of variable in the case of ordinal type of variable you know the the ordinal type of variable the values that are there in your variable right or rank if i say 5 is greater than 4 and 4 is greater than 3 it makes sense 5 is greater than 4 and 4 is which means if i get rating 5 from the customer that means the quality of the food is superior here you know uh, we can you know we can compare the values right but whereas here can i say just because i encoded the value for male as one can i say male is superior than female female is zero can i say one is greater than zero no right can i say zero is one yes mathematically this is correct but when it comes to Uh, this it is not it doesn't make any sense we cannot say uh, females are inferior than male you cannot do ranking here in the case of ordinal type of the variable the values that are stored in your variable categorical variable or intrinsically has some order in it that is the difference between these two both of them are categorical nominal and ordinal but the exact difference is the values that are stored in the variable or uh, uh, in the case of ordinal right uh, in intrinsically it has some order in it next one is the interval so even in the case of interval the data can be categorized ranked and you can evenly space it the next one is the ratio the data can be even in this case you can categorize the data you can rank the data you can evenly space it and as natural and has a natural zero here okay so what is the example for the interval interval intervals are distance between two things right two things and um, for example right so what i would say let's take a simple example or you just think interval is something like um, sorry yeah so you have something called discrete variable and con- uh, continuous variable so i use this example okay i use this term discrete variable not only me as we move further this is the term will be used more frequently discrete variable this is ratio is also called as a continuous variable continuous variable ratio is also called as a continuous variable uh, interval is called as a discrete variable you just think that discrete variables are nothing but the whole number whole number 
let's say in the labor ward in the hospital labor ward right your senior staff nurse when she enters into the labor ward and if she asks the junior nurse how many number of male kids born how many number of female kids born since morning the answer could be something like um, since morning we have two male kids and four female kids or maybe the opposite it is not like 2.33 male kids 3.99 male kids for female kids for right we never use the these values 3.99 in this case right number of kids born in a labor ward is one of the example for discrete variable whole number it is a whole number okay how many number of defects surfaced let's say you are in the manufacturing unit assembly line okay and you are inspecting the number of defects produced or surfaced uh, you know when you uh, when you do the uh, let's say you are a quality inspector as and when the machines produces the finished goods it is your responsibility to you know uh, in investigate or test whether the finished goods whether the produced finished goods are in line with the specifications okay okay now you are finding some problem okay there are some products were not produced in line with the specification there are some deviations so you call it as a defect okay how many number of defects defected products are there produced you say three defected products five defected products eight defected you never say 5.33 8.3 the defective product defective products the whole number okay so these are the examples for the uh, the discrete variable it is a whole number and the next one is the other one is age other example is age if somebody is asking you what is your age or your customer age we never say he is 23 year old and uh, uh, 23 year 2 months 2 days old we never say that way right we tell the whole number 23 year old 24 year old something like that and these are the examples for the interval interval is something like a discrete variable whole number so you can apply mean median and standard deviation on these type of variables you can use the arithmetic operations you can perform arithmetic operations such as mean median standard deviation on the interval type of variable so what is the average number of defects produced by uh, machines in the um, in the factory right in the factory outlet so in the factory right so uh, so in that case we can say in different um, factory these are the average defects we received it okay so these are the example what is the average age of your customer this is another example right so what is the standard deviation you can find out the mean median standard deviation on this type of variable so interval if somebody tells you interval means you just think this is a discrete variable okay and what is a ratio ratio is a continuous variable because a continuous variable please remember these terms will be used discrete variable continuous variable these terms will be used more frequently even uh, during the model building right machine learning model when we train it so that time we use this term continuous variable discrete variable all these things you need to remember this one categorical variable also you remember it is nothing but the normal type of variables okay so in the case of uh, ratio also we can do some kind of categorization right you can do some kind of categorization you can do ranking we can uh, perform arithmetic operation like mean median standard deviation what is the example for ratio salary your salary need not to be a whole number right salary you are let's say you are getting your take home is um, uh, 1 lakh uh, 82000 23 
0.32 something like that after deducting the LOP this is your salary your salary need not to be a whole number and other example for continuous variable is weight you want to ship your laptop from Bangalore to Hyderabad via a courier service they will measure the weight of your laptop let's say the weight of a laptop is 2.65 kgs what does it says 2 kgs 65 grams or is you know 60, 650 kgs so 2 kgs 650 grams are there you cannot round it off we cannot say it's a whole number right if you try to uh, round it off what will happen either if you round it to 2 it is a loss for the courier company because every 500 gram they are charging some money okay if they round it to round it down to 2 it is a loss for them if they round it up to 3 it is a loss for you because you will have to pay 350 grams money unnecessarily to them so in the case of continuous as the name suggests continuous variables right so it will have a continuous values 2.650 decimal values will be there you just think in the case of interval it is a whole number okay um, the ratio level variables have all of the characters of nominal ordinal and integral variables but also have a meaningful zero point okay the zero point is real in this case it is not arbitrary okay so to so if, if somebody says zero right it means zero okay you can add subtract divide and multiply the two ratio level variables okay so you can do that way the zero has a real meaning here if i say in my account my account balance is zero that means i i don't have anything here nothing is there with me okay but whereas in the case of uh, interval zero has some right so right say so the in the in this case the um, so the, in, the, in this case it has a meaningful zero value here mean zero point whereas if i say zero degrees let's say you are in uh, the in a resort okay in, let's say you are in a kodaikanal or uti or kashmir right if somebody is asking you what is the temperature if you say zero it it, it so if somebody says zero degree temperature it doesn't mean there is no temperature at all right abs it doesn't mean absence of temperature right so zero degrees also right it tells us something it means the temperature is very bad so it's so cold so the, in the case of interval the zero right uh, zero zero means is something like a absolute value okay so um, it doesn't represent the absence of the temperature you just you know think that way okay zero has some uh, something here meaning here here also the you know natural zero if somebody says you know the real meaning of zero is yes, we need to go by the real meaning of the zero here but here it is something like no it's something like um, uh, arbitrary okay so here the zero is real meaning in it in the case of the ratio type of variable so if i say uh, my account balance is zero that means i don't have anything the the real meaning for zero is coming into picture when it comes to this one but whereas in the case of interval the classic example is temperature if i say zero degree temperature that doesn't mean you know there is no temperature at all right <laughs> fine so that is what you need to remember it here so we understood the four types of or the scale four different uh, scales of measurement and you understood the difference between each of them so nominal and ordinal both of them are categorical type of variable but the difference is when it comes to ordinal type of variable you can categorize the data and also you can rank them so interval and ratio 
interval is also called as a discrete variable ratio is called um, continuous variable so in the case of nominal the data can only be categorized ordinal the data can be categorized and ranked the data can be categorized ranked and evenly spaced the data can be categorized all these thing and as a real and as a natural zero ratio if somebody says zero balance in my account yes it has a natural zero okay nothing is there now these are the exam let's see how many of you can answer this gender is a nominal type of variable right so can you tell me whether age is a nominal type of what type of uh, what is the scale of measurement this one can someone type it all of you please type it in the chat window quickly what is the scale of measurement the age so gender i have given example gender is a nominal type of variable they say male we can specify one or female we can specify two or you can use a text value as it is male is male female is female to distinguish or to categorize the data set you can use this one yeah age is ordinal so age is ordinal okay so anybody else how many of you agree with um, aruna aruna says age is ordinal is that ordinal so can i say 23 uh, you know a customer uh, you know has age 23 and another customer has age 24 can i say uh, customer uh, with age 24 is superior than customer with age 23 or no just because uh, a, a customer age is lesser we cannot say see ranking we cannot do ranking here right 24 is not superior than 23 let's say the order total number of orders we go by the total number of orders we want to management wants to know the total number of orders uh, with the age breakdown right so so they want to see 23 24 how many number of orders we received it 24 to 26 how many number of orders we received it okay so just because Uh, yeah, there is no superiority. Come, you just think when it comes to ordinal, right? You just think about the the superiority thing. Okay, then you should be able to understand. How about Mukilan? Mukilan, or the others? Can someone else tell me what is age? Uh, what a scale of measure age is interval okay <clears throat> age is interval hours spent is a ratio performance rating is ordinal very good so this is the correct answer the answer correct answer is age is an interval and hours spent is a ratio because it it has a decimal value see this is a continuous this is a discrete variable whole number i don't know this is a whole number there is no superiority comes into picture when it comes to superiority then we call it a ordinal type of variable ha oh, deepak good that you join okay okay so this is age is continuous variable hence we call it a interval right so we call i call this a interval this is your ordinal okay this is a discrete variable discrete you understood discrete is a whole number and this is my continuous variable and the next one is gender is a you know it's a nominal variable we cannot say discrete or continuous variable okay and um, male 1 2 if i say even if i say 0 or 1 right Uh, yeah so in general we use discrete values only uh, for encoding and all okay next we will take a look at what is uh, discrete statistics so as i told you there are two main branches are there under statistics one is the discrete statistics the other one is inferential statistics 
inferential statistics okay we will st start take a look at what exactly descriptive statistics is all about so what is a descriptive statistics so it involves summarizing organizing the and organizing the data so that the data can be easily understood so unlike uh, the inferential statistics okay unlike uh, in the case of uh, inferential statistics right uh, unlike inference statistics when it comes to descriptive we just describe the data we are not going to make any attempt to make inferences from the sample to the whole population we are simply describing the data let's say you joined with a company and uh, you as a data scientist right the first step what you are doing is you are exploring the data you are conducting the data exploration as part of the data exploration what you are doing you are using the descriptive statistics right you are trying to get the gist of the data they have given you the sales data right so with the sales data you know the management wants to know quickly can you give me uh, you know the gist of this data last you know let's say 6 months data sales data was given to you okay so they wants to know the gist of the data summary of the data so minimum so that's where the five number summary is coming into picture what is five number summary five number summary minimum maximum and then you have something like median and uh, first quartile quartile 1 and quartile 3 so these are called five number summary so how much what is the minimum sales that we achieved minimum sales for the in the last 6 month data what we could say the minimum sales is we made the minimum sales is 120k the maximum sale is uh, you know five you know let's say you know 5 you know 82833k something like that this is the maximum minimum sale maximum sale uh, what is the median sale average sale we made across the category let's say you sell the products under three different categories in each category what is the average sale we made what is the minimum sale we made in each category what is the maximum sale we made in each category what is the quartile one uh, you know sales value what is the quartile three sales value median is the middle value okay with this you will no matter the volume of the data right so even if the volume is very high getting this information giving this information is pretty faster but it takes um, uh, you know uh, longer time if the volume of the data is very high though it takes longer time so these are the five number summary you can give it quickly right it doesn't require too much of calculations right so complex calculations you don't have to train your model you don't have to use any algorithms with this you will get a gist of what is there in your data you will be able to understand the characteristic of data at a high level got it so this is what a descriptive data strategy there are some other example for these are the typical questions let's say in the case of um, telecom industry right so the your management wants to know what proportion of customers have respond to the offer in the data set what is the average duration of calls what is the median call what is the average age of customers what is the distribution of customers by gender right so what is the distribution of uh, customers by gender for example you know in my sorry in my histogram i have something like this distribution of customers right the distribution is something like this positive skewed or if it is a you know normally distribute normal curve bell curve left skewed data right this is this is what i'm talking about okay the distribution of customers by gender male customers distribution how many number of uh, you know calls made by the female customers male customers what is the distribution of that variable number of calls is my variable quantitative variable number of calls made by female right so number of calls made by female in the last 6 uh, months if you plot it right so you can see each month if you take the average and if you plot it if you get something like this 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 will show you the distribution 
with that distribution you will be able to understand uh, you know are there any lopsided uh, you know uh, calls made by the customer or the calls made in a uniform way or something like that okay is there a difference in call duration between people that sign up and people that don't sign up okay so by conducting the descriptive analytics or statistics you should be able to answer to these business questions at an high level with this numbers you will gain a quick insight what is the average duration of calls what is the median uh, you know duration of calls what is the average age of my customers if you know that you can better target the right customers you want to launch a campaign okay if the average age of customers uh, at least you know the average of customer is um, between uh, 23 or uh, 25 they are the one making so many calls maximum number of calls made by made uh, with the breakdown of the customer's age when you look at that chart you are able to understand people let's say you know 25 to 30 years right so the, 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 the that age group the call duration is very high maybe they are working people you know they are all in that age group most of them are working people they need to call their home you know they, they need to make calls to office or senior people they will be spending a lot of time in status calls so with the distribution by plotting their uh, you know call duration the distribution will get to know so are they are the distributions normal or symmetric or asymmetric you will get to know that okay there are uh, two types of um, there are two branches are there within this descriptive statistics please remember in the statistics two different branches are there descriptive and inferential inferential i am going to talk later within this descriptive statistics there are two different branches sub branches are there the one is measures of central tendency here we are very particular about the location of the data the central location of the data the uh, the classic example is average what is the average salary drawn by employees across the department right so the other branches measures of spread measures of spread or distribution measures of distribution measures of spread right they use different terms so we will take a look at the measures of central tendency now so so far we discussed about what is descriptive statistics in simple term summarizing the data and summarizing and presenting the data in a, in a visual format okay summary basically we are doing summarization to get to know the characteristics of the data at the high level that is what your summary descriptive statistics as part of this there are two branches we will take a look at measures of central tendency so we have something called uh, we, you know as part of measures of central tendency we are very particular about the central location of the data in the distribution okay where the center of the distribution tends to be that is what we are very particular about the measures of as part of the measures of central tendency in the measures of central tendency we use more frequently these measures mean median mode these are the measures we'll be using it more frequently so what is mean mean is average in statistics we call average as a mean this is these are the this is a data set given to me for uh, different uh, you know data scientist salary is given here and if somebody is asking you what is the average data scientist salary okay forget about this at this moment and if i ask you to find out the average salary of the data scientist for these five records you will get this value 48000 but we have some other value here one more value is there i did not consider this one 
when i took the average of you know other values right i did not you know take into account of this one as part of averaging all these values okay five five records only i averaged it with this record i could see that 48000 is the average salary drawn by data scientist this is what the this is what i conclude by taking the average of these five data scientists right so i can say uh these data scientists falls under you know a band 4 uh, and level 6 see in the company for each um, when you join any company right uh, especially software company i don't know other company okay so they last something called band and level so in band level band 4 level 6 all the f- employees salary they recorded it here including this one okay all these data let's say uh, you know or is simple term here you, we can say you know 4 uh, year 4 year all the 4 year data scientist salary in the same company we noted down here even though you know all these six employees are having 4 years experience it doesn't mean all their salary should be same isn't it even in our company you can see the same thing so you you are four year experience when even your peer is four year experience there will be a slight difference between your salary and you know his salary right fine but um, in this case purposefully i included this data here without considering this one if i take the average of this five employees who has four year experience i can say that the average salary drawn by the data scientist with 4 years is 48000 but if you see something the other record here this data this data is way too high compared to other five employees salary now you are wondering all these six guys are having 4 years experience only at how come this guy's salary is very high now you are calling the payroll department you are asking him hey why this specific employee salary is very high if he says no no there is a typo you ignore the last zero you say no you ignore the last zero okay we put uh, additional zero here mistakenly that means even this employee salary is also same as somewhat closer to these guys other guys right but on the contrary when you call the hr or the payroll guys if they say no no it is correct only so in that case if you consider this guy's salary is also while you perform the average when you compute the average right so when you take into account of all these six data and if you take the average you will get this one and if somebody else let's say your friend is working with other company and he is asking you hey what is the average salary drawn by four years data scientist i am looking for a job change if i get into a if i get into a data scientist role in your company what is the average sale can i expect it will you tell this number or will you tell this number which one you will tell all of you please type it in the chat room let us make it see if you can't uh, you know con- if you don't concentrate here gone your time is wasted deepak chakri 40000 aruna 48000 can you justify aruna why 48000 why not it is 123k because our common tells common sense tells us just because one person is getting very high salary and if i include his salary along with others obviously my average will also get skewed get skewed i use this term skewed the average will also get skewed because my data is skewed my data itself skewed because of this one huge value my data is also skewed skewed data we could see some kind of asymmetry this 500000 is called outlier we call this an outlier 
What do you mean by outlier? Unusually, if you find a very big value, or unusually if you find a very low value, let's say minus two, three, four, five, six, or let's say minus four, four eight something, minus four eight four five six, negative value, low value. Up, you know, unusually very low value, unusually very high value, or we can say extreme values, right? Right. So in this case, we could see both extreme. You know, unusually very low value, unusually very high value. We can see that. So these are called your outlier. If you have an outlier in your data set, we call that as a skewed data. So this 500,000, so look at here. So if you compare this guy's salary is somewhat close to this one. So though there is a difference, but 48,000 is somewhat closer to 57. But when you compare the 48,000 with 500,000, it is much, much, uh, the difference is very, very high. 48,000, 500,000, the distance is very high. Whereas 48 to 57 is somewhat closer. And if you compare 53 and 57, somewhat closer 53 and 41 also somewhat closer but if you compare 41 with the 500 the distance is too high hence we call this an outlier there is a formula for outlier okay uh, at this moment you just think extremely very high value extremely very low value is also called as an outlier very high value abnormally very high value abnormally very low value is also called your outlier if you have abnormally or unusually very high or low value in your data set because of skewed data. With this skewed data, if you use mean, your mean value will also get skewed. So with this, what we conclude? I don't know, why don't you tell what we conclude? Can I use mean in this case? So let's say HR is telling me very clearly, yes, this is a valid data. It is not a typo. This guy is getting 500,000 because he joined from Google and his experience also high. Though his experience is very high, he is okay to fall under 4 years and his interview performance is very good and uh, his past career, based on his career track or you know previous company, right? We, have, we, are, we went one step ahead and we got approval for this guy. Okay, he is getting 500,000. In that case, you have to increase, you know, include this data also when you perform the average, when you compute the average. But if you exclude it, you are getting this one. It's good. If you tell your company who is working in, uh, you know, uh, or if you tell uh, your friend, right, hey, if you join my company, on an average, you can expect 48,000 given your four years experience. You will not tell this one. The reason is, here we include the outlier. When we include the outlier, while we compute the mean, the average is also skewed. If you tell this to your friend, what will happen? You are setting a wrong expectation with him. He will be thinking, hey, if I join this company, I can get 123k. It's a very good hike. Better I will apply for this position with this company. But the reality is not this one. Just because one person is getting very high salary, you cannot, you know, include that guy also as part of uh, your, uh, you know, averaging. And you cannot tell, hey, you will get 123k. You are, you are setting a wrong expectation. So, to conclude, if you don't have outlier in your data set, then you can go for mean. You can do the average. If you have a skewed data, which means if you have an outlier, unusually very high value, unusually very low value, then don't use mean at all. We have some other measure, you can use that. What is the other measure? Other measure is called as median. We have something called median. Median is the middle value. Very simple to remember. Look at this data set. We have three six uh, nine data points are there and, and the, the rule is first you need to sort the data in ascending order sort the data if you have to compute the median manually sort it in ascending order 
okay actually the you know you just think this is something like uh, 51 okay it's not 11 okay 10 20 22 ascending order and then if you look at the middle one since the number of data points are nine here in total right so sorry three six seven, sorry uh, here nine yeah nine is there it is a odd right nine is an odd so in the case of uh, the odd right then sample sample size is nine here it's odd right uh, since finding the median is pretty simple or the other simple way of doing is you just cancel this first value last value cancel this one and this one and this one and this one this one you are left with this value this is your median let's say my total number of data points are how many of them are there here you have 10 right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 the total number of my sample size you just think my sample size is 10 in this case also the same rule is you need to sort the data in ascending order fine we did it you see this is also 51 and this is you just think uh, you know uh, this is 63 something like that okay so what you do is in this case we sort the data in ascending order but here the total number of uh, samples is 10 hence in this case what will happen the middle there we have two middle values are there in this case we have only one middle value it's pretty easier to find out the median so in this case we have two you know middle values are there okay so in this case what you need to you need to add these two values 32 plus 32 divided by 2 so which is nothing but your 32 this is how you need to find out the median this is the one we study during school time now let us use the median for the same data set for the same data set so the same data set i copy paste sorry mm. the same data set oh, one second let me just The same data set I copy paste. Ignore the other one. Okay, you ignore this one. Ignore this one. The same data set in the previous slide, whatever, right? We have used it. If I compute the average for these values by excluding the outlier, the mean is 47,700. If you find out the median for this value, what is the middle value here? If you sort the data in ascending order, what will happen? 38,150. And uh, you have what is the next uh, highest value? Forty-one thousand, and uh, the other one is uh, sorry, thirty-eight, forty-one, forty-eight thousand, and um, fifty-three and uh, fifty-seven. Okay, I did not take into account of the outlier. You just think you know thirty-eight for simplicity. Just thirty-eight means thirty-eight thousand and dot. Okay, you just think that. So what is the middle? So I started this data in ascending order. The, the middle value is this one, right? So 48,670, okay. So that is the 48,670, correct, right? So the median is the middle value, 48,670, the median. So if mean is, you need to take, add all the values divided by five. So when you, you know, by, because look here, the this curve right so this um, thing I just put it up to this one only so if you you know so all add all these values and divide it by five you'll get this one the next one is if after including the outlook here after including the outlier my median is mean is 123k that's what we have seen it earlier the mean is 123k if I use the mean formula 120 but if I use the median what happens here Aruna when I use median instead of using mean if I find out the middle value it is not gets skewed like a mean in your data if you have the outlier if you use mean the average value also skewed it is not the right way of doing it but when I use the median even though I have an outlier in my data set, it is not getting skewed. Got it? Okay. So look here. So this is the data, right? So look, uh, where is this one? 
38,041 and the last one is 500. The first one, last one, if you cancel it, right, so you have 48 and 53. If you add these two things, for at least, you know, 50, 50, right, you'll get 50 only, somewhat closer to 50 only. So that's what you're getting, 50,000. So median is so robust compared to mean if your data has outlier in it. This is the takeaway. Yes, we did not get much difference as we get, you know, close value. That's correct, I don't know. Hope you understood, right? Uh, in the case of skewed data, which means if the data has extremely very high value or extremely low value, better you can rely on median. You can use median, don't use mean. If you don't have any outlier in a data set, then you can go for mean. Okay, it's already 132. Okay, so what I will do is, uh, since a few of you have the afternoon uh, office at right, 2 to 11, I'm going to wrap up. So this week, uh, tomorrow what we'll do is we'll continue with the mode and the measures of spread or the shape of distribution. Okay, so initially we'll have one one hour duration. Okay, Saturday one hour, Sunday one hour uh, for the next two to three weeks. Afterwards, we will increase it to two, two hours. Okay, so Saturday two hours, Sunday two hours. Only then we should be able to complete it on time, right? Any questions so far? I'm going to unmute you all. So whatever I covered as of now, are you able to follow me? That is very much important. It's a very pretty simple one, right? I did not discuss too much. Very basic thing only I covered. Are you able to grasp it? Yeah, she says yes, sir. She's able to grasp it. Aruna was able to grasp. Okay, the pace is initially slow, but as we move further, right? When I start uh, the inference to start, it'll be slightly complex. Anyway, I'll try to reduce your learning gap. But if you can let me know as and when, right? If you think, uh, you know, the, you know, if you can send me your feedback, uh, it'll be good. Okay so that we can make a course correction instead of waiting till the fag end. If you think you are pretty faster or if you slow down, study material, all these things, I'll give you access, don't worry. This Monday will give you, my website is now up and running after uh, we lost a lot of data due to some crash. Now we are able to uh, you know, restore it to some extent. We'll share the login credentials to you all by this Monday noon, okay? And um, you can go through on all the study materials. We'll share the links, you know, where you can find which document, all the things, including the script, everything, okay? And tomorrow we'll continue the, uh, you know, the second part of the descriptive statistics. Okay, you, since you don't have any questions, I'm going to wrap up the session now. And still, feel free to send me if you have any concerns or feedback uh, to my WhatsApp, okay?